All right, we're gonna do uh, a proof here. We're gonna write a proof of proposition eight. This is a proposition that relates to some of the special matrices that we talked about. What it says, and you can read it on the document on the right side of the screen, is that if A is any matrix, not necessarily square, then A transpose times A is symmetric. So let's get started with, the, um, with writing this proof. I'll hop in here to my LaTeX over here. So we'll begin our proof, begin proof, proof of proposition eight. Make sure we end our proof. And we're going to get started by writing sort of the beginning and end of the proof, and then we'll figure out how to put the math in the middle. That's my favorite proof writing strategy. As we go throughout the semester, it might not be quite so simple, but for now, uh, this is kind of a nice, a nice way to start. So I'm gonna hide the PDF so we can focus on the writing here. Let me scroll to where I want to be. So we're gonna start by letting A be a matrix and we're gonna give it entries. Its entries are gonna be A sub I, J. And it's gonna be an M by N matrix. And we want to, uh, we don't really need to start by assuming anything. We're just starting, we're assuming that we have a matrix and then we're gonna show that A transpose times A is symmetric. Um, so let's start by considering the product A transpose times A. We already know that we want the last line of our proof to be something like, therefore, A transpose A is symmetric. Well, now we've got to put the math in the middle. And one thing that we probably want to do is actually make sure that we can take the product A transpose times A. We know that matrix products are a little bit picky. So let's start by noticing that um, A transpose is in the set of N by M matrices, N times M. And therefore the product a transpose A exists, and it's going to be an N by N matrix, N times N matrix. So to show that this thing is symmetric, we want to show that, uh, let's sort of get to what we're aiming for. We want to show that uh, A transpose A transpose is the same thing as A transpose A. Right? That's what it means to be symmetric. When you take the transpose, nothing super exciting happens. Um, one of the things we could do is we could do this at the level of entries, which we'll do. And I'll also give an alternate proof that, uses, that uh, takes care of things at the level of matrix algebra using some of the theorems that we developed about the way matrix algebra works. So let's do an entry level proof first. Um, so let's cons the uh, ijth entry of A transpose A is given by, I'm gonna start a little align start environment because I might want to expand it out a little bit. So let's get ourselves ready to uh, line up some equalities here. So I'm gonna use my favorite notation for pulling out the ijth entry of an arbitrary matrix. So I'm gonna put some brackets around the matrix and then I'm gonna pull out the ijth entry. So we have A transpose A. What left and right do in this context is it will just scale up the size of those square brackets in case A transpose is like a little bit bigger than we expect, it'll make the, um, it'll make these brackets scale up to fit. It's kind of a neat trick. Okay, so here I'm gonna use the definition of matrix multiplication. I have that I'm taking, uh, I don't know if I define this, let's see. Um, the i row of A transpose, 
I use my left and right trick again. We take that transpose, and then we take the dot product with uh, the ith or the jth column of a. Um, if I made a macro, it's probably a capital C. So we're taking this dot product, and now let's remember that actually the transpose of the ith row of the matrix A transpose is really just the ith column of the matrix A, right? Row I of A transpose is column I of the matrix A, so we can replace that. You see I'm lining up my ampersands. Uh, that just helps me keep track of where my equations are. So we have column I of A, taking the dot product with column J of A, and we can write that out as a big sum. So and equals the sum, uh, ugh, okay. It's gonna be terrible. It might be a little bit terrible, but I think we can do it. Uh, K equals one. This is an N by N matrix, so I'm gonna go K equals one to N, and I've got A sub I N, or A sub I K, times A sub K J. So that's how that dot product is gonna work. And in fact, I mixed up my rows and columns here. This is the ith column of A, so I'm gonna have K I and K J there. Normally we do have the, this is really the like I kth entry of A transpose, but that's the K I th entry of A. Uh, and it's probably worth noting that this is gonna end up being the same as the j i th entry of a transpose a. So maybe we can kind of work it backwards from there. So if we do that, we can notice that this is actually one of our properties of sigma notation is that we can rearrange the terms and that's fine. So we can make this a j, uh, k j, a k i. I just changed the order of that real number multiplication there. And that looks like column J of A. I'm taking the dot product with column I of A. And that looks like, so this is a big long series of equations that I'm doing here, but let's follow it through. That looks like uh, some left and right parentheses on here, it helps if I could spell. That's gonna look like row J of A transpose, taking the transpose, taking the dot product of that with um, column I of A. And cool, that's actually the same thing as the, or the definition of the J I entry of A transpose A. A transpose A. All right, so I've written my big, uh, you know, my big long series of equations here. What I might want to do is actually revise the sentence that comes before it a little bit, but probably we should check that it compiles. I don't know, are you guys feeling, oh, what the hell, we'll figure it out later. We'll check it later. I'm feeling lucky or maybe just stupid, but well, <laughs> we'll see. Um, so the IJF entry of A transpose A is given by all of this stuff, um, but we can say something a little bit better. We can say beginning with the definition of the IJF entry of A transpose A and applying properties of, uh, of the transpose and summations, we have this, blah, 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 blah. So you see like the first, when I say that I'm using all of these things, I might be using them more than once. Um, I'm using the definition of matrix multiplication. That's the definition of the IJ entry of that product. And then I'm using the properties of the transpose here and just taking a dot product. I'm using properties of summations here and then 
expanding that back out into a dot product and using properties of the transpose to get back to here. And then the definition again. So I'm not gonna say like I did this and then I did this and then I did this and then I did this again and then I did this again. I'm just gonna let the reader figure out where I'm using the relevant things. Um, we can then say this is the definition of a symmetric matrix as desired. All right, so it's not quite as, yeah, I'm gonna delete my last line, which is always a little unsatisfying, but we see what we were aiming for. Um, maybe I shouldn't have deleted it here. Let me just comment it out. I can say like this was, I knew that I was headed for A transpose A is symmetric, and that helped me figure out what I was aiming for. So I'll leave this at the bottom as a little commentary. Um, and once I post this video to YouTube, I'll come back and I'll throw the link to the video in this document. Now, I said I'd give you an alternate proof that used the properties of matrix algebra that we talked about today. So let me, um, let me go ahead and do that. So, and now you see I'm really doing something risky. I'm gonna take up two proofs before I try to compile this thing. Alternate proof of proposition eight using properties of matrix algebra. It's a little bit of a long title for a proof, but that's okay. Um, so we're gonna start the same way. We're gonna let A be an M by N matrix. And notice that I'm not bothering to give A any, um, any entries here. And then I'm gonna end my proof. So I'm not giving A entries because I'm gonna do a capital letter proof, meaning I'm gonna use the properties of matrix algebra to figure out how this all works without having to delve into the lowercase letter entries of my matrices. Um, I guess I still want to consider the product and point out that it's an N times N matrix. So I'm gonna just yoink that and pop it down here. Yoink. All right, um, and then what we're gonna use is we're gonna do something, we're gonna use two different properties of the transpose that you'll find in the course packet and also in our textbook. So by properties of the transpose, I might not even need to do this in, what, in like a big long, like vertically long series of equations. I'm gonna see if this looks okay this way. I'm gonna do left, a transpose A, and I take that transpose. I should put a right at the end of that. Okay, there we go. What we know from the first uh, part of the theorem that's properties of the transpose is that if I take the transpose of a product, I take the product of the transposes, but I reverse their order. Actually, I guess maybe that's the, the third part of the properties of the transpose. Anyway, what I get is A transpose times A transpose transpose. And I'm gonna work on putting some better grouping symbols around here. So let's, ah, I didn't mean to do that. Left, uh, left, right, right. So we've got this equality that says take the transposes of the, of the matrices in that product, reverse their order. Remember that we have to do that so that the, um, the matrices are still compatible to multiply when we're changing rows and columns and we're gonna change the order of our multiplication as well. And then the second uh, set of parentheses, this left, left, right, right business, the first part of the theorem, really, I'm not lying to you this time, says that if I take the transpose of A transpose, I get A back. And so what I'm gonna get is A transpose times A. And that is another way of saying that we have a symmetric matrix. Therefore the matrix uh, A transpose A is symmetric. And that's the end of that proof. Um, I much prefer this proof. I didn't have to think about like dot products and columns and rows and expanding sums and switching the, um, you know, switching the order of the sum uh, the elements in my summands and all of that good stuff. This is just like boom, boom, boom. We hit it with properties of the transpose. We're done. 
all of that stuff that we did up in the previous proof is, is sort of like buried in the proofs of the theorems that take care of matrix algebra. So we're sort of using it in the background, but we don't have to actually think through it more than once. We just think through it in the proof of the theorem. And that's what theorems are good for in math. I think of theorem as like um, a basic unit of theory. I don't think that's the actual definition, but if you think of it like that, it's sort of like, oh, here's a little result that now I can use to build up to other results. So I guess the moment has come. We should see if this is gonna compile. Oh my goodness, would you look at that? No errors. Professor Gibbons, you're on the ball today. So let's see if that's true or if that actually lied to us. Nope, that looks good, right? So let me hide this pane a little more. Um, so here's our original proof that we did at the level of matrix entries. Uh, we have our product. We Notice that a transpose is a matrix of this size, so we can multiply them and we get this n by n matrix. Uh, life is good. And then we do a bunch of stuff. We do a bunch of manipulations. Um, we've got some summations, we've got some dot products, and ultimately we get down to what we want. Um, the alternate proof, so that takes up, oh, I don't know, like maybe a little over a third of a page. The alternate proof is pretty darn short. Like if we had used some creative use of semicolons and stuff, it could, we could probably get it down to one sentence. Um, we have an n by n matrix. We're looking at the product. We notice the product is n by n and therefore, uh, sorry, the transpose is n by n. So we get a product and we just hit it with some properties of matrix algebra. And that's it. Oh, I think I wanted to move that transpose. Uh, so if you haven't figured this out about Overleaf yet, if you double click on something, it takes you to the part of the code. So I wanna move that transpose inside my parentheses. That was the whole point to make that line a little bit clearer. Um, in fact, you'll notice that the way I'm writing these proofs, I'm sort of breaking them up into parts within the document, but they really don't need to be separate paragraphs. I could like get rid of these um, extra spaces. So if I do that, you'll see this will tighten up a little bit. Right, what that little uh, percentage sign did was it moved the notice to the same paragraph as the beginning. So if you wanna leave some white space in your document, go for it. Um, if you put in some percentage symbols in, in your code, it will um, help keep your prose nice and tight. Anyway, that's an example of doing some proof writing with some of these properties, one at the level, of, one example at the level of entries and one example at the level of matrix algebra. Uh, let me know if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and uh, feel free to come grab any of this code for your own purposes in your writing assignments this semester.